Okay, this is camp before gains is mill, and the important thing is I have to get army organization to six. Very happy with where everything else is. I like to have four in recon, um, four in, and, and just for this reason, so I can see how many uh, enemy soldiers I'm going to face. Uh, and I have to build some units. I'm really a bit undersized. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete the ballast units, and I just skipped ahead. They're gone. And um, yeah, the the ballast units drive up scaling in grand battles as a general rule, but you have to experiment with that to see if that's the case. So I'm going to go to uh, an army size of about uh, most of my units around 1150. Uh, my artillery, go ahead and push it up to 12 if I can, if I don't have enough guns, and I'm running mostly really good guns. And that's the thing about the North is as the North can really buy just overpowered artillery. I mean, it's just so incredibly overpowered on the battlefield. And um, it, well, it's not really OP. I mean, it's historically that the North had just a, incredible artillery. And uh, I mean, keep in mind, the North had Gatling guns by the end of the war and um, cartridges that it could put into rifles. And right after the Civil War, it retrofitted its 1861s with the breech-fired cartridge-fire weapons. I mean, the technology of the North was way ahead of the South. So, yeah, it's no surprise. So, yeah, I'm looking at the numbers to make sure that I don't scale up, um, start scaling up the enemy, and I don't. That 1150 allows me to do that. I'm going to take all of my infantry, give it the best possible, uh, give my infantry best possible weapons I can while making use of the stuff I have for free. In hindsight, maybe I should have sold some of the crappier weapons and bought better weapons. Uh, I don't know. I'll think about that next time through. But if you think about it, if you're selling a weapon, well, I, I don't really want to do that till I get economics to 10, because that's how you get the max value for your weapons. So I, I, as a general rule, I, I like to just sit on my inventory until I get economics to 10, and that's what I'm doing here. So yeah, I'll buy new stuff, but I don't want to sell anything until I get the best price for it. And as you can see, I have half a million dollars. And at the end of this, I'm still going to have a pile of money. It's not like, you know, I need to squeeze some extra cash out of the system. I have plenty. So yeah, moving officers around. What I want to make sure is that the command line is greater than the efficiency line or there's a hidden debuff. And the other thing is if I can move officers around and get the next perk, unit perk, that's bonus too. So yeah. So as much as possible, I'm putting in uh, raw recruits because they're free. And if you put in a better general, you get to put in more raw recruits than if you have a worse general. So um, that's, or officer, that's, you know, why you want to move officers around. So that's all I can get out of that. I have to buy some. It's not very expensive. I'm not going to get the 30 units, by the way. And it doesn't matter because some of these units just, they're just not going to do very much. They come in so late. And the brand new units that I build, they're not, you know, they're not that great. Um, some of them are fairly weak. so. Um, they they can't pitch in that much anyway. But this is how you build the Union Army. You have to get units in, and you have to get units experience before they can become good, because they start with an efficiency of only 11. That's the challenge of the Union Army. So you have to get them in, you have to get them combat experience. You have to get officers in the ranks, and the officers have to get promotions, and it just takes a while. So yeah, I'm thinking about where I want my army to be. I'm, as I said before, on Brigadier General, I'm not bashful about just pushing everyone to 12 because it's just easy and you don't have to fiddle with it. And then you can just switch guns between units easily too. Um, higher levels of difficulty, the number is eight. Uh, I'll have 
my first division guns might be 12, but everybody, maybe second division, but everybody else probably be about eight. Um, uh, yeah, second core, yeah, eight. And if I do have anything in third core, which shouldn't be that much, they, they might even be six. So, yeah, that's... And my infantry in third core probably would top out mid-game at, I'm guessing, a, a thousand. So, yeah. So I'm building this army specifically for Gaines's Mill. I need Cav, I need, I need really good uh, skirmishers, snipers, um, and I'm going to need a bunch of rifled uh, units with rifles that have nice range um, because of the nature of the battle. So yeah, and the more canister fire weapons I have, the better. Um, yeah, 20 pound parrot um, and six weird for taking out enemy artillery has a role, but it's not as crucial as having weapons that fire canister. So anyway, Gaines's Mill is coming up. I'm going to get uh, Gaines's Mill and Malvern Hill. I'm going to average just over 10 to 1. So for those two battles, it's, um, yeah, over 10 to 1 for Gaines's Mill and almost 10 to 1 for uh, Malvern Hill. So the thing about Gaines's Mill, if you do it right, there's lots of killing zones uh, that you can catch the enemy in and just slaughter them, and I intend to do that. So, yeah, this is getting the army ready to just inflict massive damage on, on the enemy. So, yeah, I lose less than 2,000 total men in the next battle and kill over over 20,000. Over 20, I lose slightly over 1,800 and kill over 19,000, almost uh, 20,000. So, yeah. It's, um, there's going to be a lot of catching the enemy in bad places and tearing them apart, and to do that, you have to have weapons that have, that are accurate at range. So, yeah, as many 1865s, Harper's Ferries, and Lorenzes, the better. Because there are certain areas of the battlefield you can really just har harvest XP if you take a good position on high ground and just fire at range. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to build. And uh, enjoy the rest of this video. It's very short, and then I'll see you at Gaines's Mill. Thanks.